everybody and welcome to Board Game Inquisition. We're, we're kind of obsessed with board games and we love trying to share with you our insights to help you curate the perfect board game collection. So another month has come and gone and as usual at the end of a month I like to do a monthly roundup where I take stock of the new games I've acquired, um, games I've gotten rid of, games I've traded away or games I feel like that I've been playing a lot that um, I'd kind of like to share with you and I hope that you will play along at home as well and let me know in the comments below you know what you've been playing or what's been exciting you or actually in fact what's been letting you down even a little bit. Um, so today it is a fabulous day here in Cork. It is gorgeously sunny and shiny and it is feeling like the start of summer. Um, so I'm very chirpy and cheerful to share with you. Um, first off, I suppose the new acquisitions to my collection this month. Um, okay, so let's start with the first new game of the month was Bob Ross, The Art of Chill Game. Um, this is one I'd heard about for ages and people seem to really, really enjoy or at least gravitate towards. Now I'm not particularly familiar with Bob Ross, he's not really an Irish thing, um, but people seem to think that he was a pretty chill guy who, you know, would teach you how to paint. And I was like, doesn't that sound like a nice game? Sure it does. Um, and sure enough, it is indeed a very chill game where you paint along with Bob and you it's a set collection kind of affair. And um, despite its simplicity, it's quite enjoyable actually. It's definitely very mellow. Um, so that was the first arrival. Okay, so the second thing that I picked up this month was Wildlands, um, mostly based on the fact that it's a Martin Wallace game. It's a game where you um, basically you need to move around the board and capture crystals and all of your actions are controlled by multi-use cards, which seems to be kind of a trait of Martin Wallace at this point. Um, it's interesting one-to-one, -one. it's quite cutthroat because there is only the two of us here. I could imagine it being fairly hectic with more players. I do like the multi-use cards. Um, each faction, however, and there are four in the box, are played differently. And I've only played one so far and I feel like maybe they're not the one for me. It reminds me a little bit of Root like that where once you find the faction that really suits you, you know, it really suits you and it's the one you want to play. So I want to play more of this game. Um, at the moment, I'm, I get hammered every time we play it and I, f I find it hard to navigate my way around the board because the way it's numbered isn't sequential in the sense. Some of it is and then it'll restart somewhere else and I find that hard to get to grips with. But um, I'm still eager to play some more. I'm not entirely writing it off yet. Um, and that was kind of an accidental purchase because it was a much more expensive game than I thought it was. So, oops. <laughs> okay, um, now onto something that I really enjoyed and this we picked up on a trip to our local game store. And this is Kingsburg's um, second edition. So this game is one I'd heard a lot about on the Dice Tower. It comes up a lot actually, um, it's one that's mentioned. And what it is, is uh, basically a resource management game but using dice. So you have a board that's full of a different type of nobles and they have numbers underneath them and they have different abilities. And you roll a number of dice at the start of the round and you have to make your dice, the pips on your dice, match the number of these nobles to be able to use their abilities, um, to be able to buy kind of upgrades and get victory points. Um, it, <laughs> I, I really like it, I think is probably the best way to put it. It really wrecks your head though. There is nothing worse than sitting there going, I have three dice and all I want is two sticks and I can't have it. Um, at two players it's interesting because you add in kind of two fake players who just randomly take up spots on the board. Um, and that adds an extra element to it that I was kind of, I don't know, I hate when they have to do something special to make it playable for two players. I have no idea how more players play this without tearing their hair out or killing each other. But it's a really, really fun game and I have to say, we've played it a lot actually since we've got it. Um, which is quite surprising because when we acquire new games they usually get played once and then once the shelf is kind of clear we'll work our way back to playing things multiple times. I just I hate leaving um, unopened games on the shelf it just it hurts me internally um, but yeah Kingsburg that was um, a really really solid and fun game really really like that. Okay so next thing, okay, so a different trip back to the same board gaming shop. It doesn't help that this board gaming shop is next to a beach and an amazing cafe with some of the best breakfast I've ever had. So some Saturday mornings we'll get up at the crack of dawn and we'll head to the beach with the dogs and we'll get destroyed and wet and windy and have a fabulous time and then this gorgeous hot breakfast and then 
we pop into the board game shop and sure since we're not there very often we usually end up picking something up so um this time we gathered ourselves a copy of lorenzo il magnifico hurrah this one had been on my radar for quite some time i'm a fan of simone luciani one of the designers he's also done games like grand austria hotel um this definitely is very reminiscent of grand austria hotel um except maybe better um so the aim of the game is to get victory points i hate that i hate that no it's basically about getting it's building a tableau um and using manipulating the pips yet again on your dice to be able to acquire certain cards for your tableau rough roughly speaking um mostly it's your head of an italian household and you're trying to improve your household i believe and there's a clergy track because he's well known for having an additional track inside of the track um it's very, very good. Um, I'd heard great things about it. And what's unusual as well is that I've been trying to trade for a copy of it for forever and nobody would seem to be trading copies, like at all. And I find that interesting because I think it meant that anybody who got a copy of it liked it so much they, they don't trade it. So that's why it wasn't out there. So I had to buy a new copy. Um, but I'm quite delighted with that. I look forward to playing that again. I definitely feel like it's a step up from Grand Austria Hotel. It got rid of some of the fiddliness that was there and the randomness with the dice. Um, and instead you get these really interesting decisions to make with cards. So I'm delighted that, you know, yet again, something I, I've been wanting for a while turned out to be really, really good. Okay, so finally, I got myself a solo game I said I wanted to play. And this is, do, 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 drum roll please, Robinson Caruso. Um, so a while back on Twitter, I asked people to share with me what you know solo games they would recommend. Um, I'd like to play games solo. I spend time here on my own during the day. But I found that either the games are too much of a puzzle, like a literal puzzle, or they turn games into something to be solved rather than something to be played. And then I found the big things, you know, like Mage Knight and stuff were just way too much. And two story driven things like this war of mine um, was just, you know, it was just beyond me. It didn't suit me. I've been trying very hard to find something that suits me. And out of all the recommendations that people gave me when I asked, um, Robinson Crusoe is the one I think that appealed to me the most because it's a story, but not a full on story. But it's more of you're dealing with events rather than you're trying to solve something. You're trying to achieve something. Um, I've had one game of this so far and I played it cooperatively, cooperatively with my husband. Um, unsurprisingly, we won. Apparently, this is a very difficult game. But my husband and I have a habit of beating cooperative games that are supposed to be difficult rather easily. Um, playing this on my own would, probably will be different for sure. I'm just, I don't think the way he does. Um, but for the two of us, it's a lengthy game, all right. But um, I think I like it. I'm still weighing it up in my head. It's a, it's a big undertaking. It's a big, it's just, it's a big game. Um, I found an amazing guide for it actually on the Board Game Geek page under the files section about how to, that taught me how to play it so I didn't have to use the rule book. The rule book is a bit dodgy for sure. Um, but that file was amazing and it walks you through setting everything up and the first mission. So I look forward to trying other missions. I don't know if I'd be a little bit um, daunted to try um, another one on my own, but I do think it's a game that has a lot of potential. It's a very cool idea. Okay, so da 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 da. So now these are um, purchases my husband managed behind my back. Um, so I'm pretty impressed that he picked these up. And these are things I suppose we've had our eye on for a little while. Actually, probably since Essen maybe last year when this comes to Newton. Um, so yeah, Newton seems to have been released in the States for ages, but not really here in Europe. So he somehow managed to pre-order a copy um, along with a pre-order of Quacks, um, the Quacks of Quidl Quid Quidlinburg expansion, the Herb Witches. Um, so I'll start with Newton. <laughs> um, Newton is another game that has Simone Luciani's name on it. Um, but this is very different, I think, than his other games. It's got a very different vibe. Um, the idea is, is that while you're trying to get victory points through, you know, working in your library, um, exploring your research, traveling parts of the world, um, going to different universities. Um, the theme is cool. Um, the boards, uh, there's two small boards, one of which is you traveling around Europe. And then there's another board that's just a mess of tangles of pathways that can lead you to, you know, your masters or to uh, victory points. Um, it's a, 
It's a game that the minute we played the first round, we both wish we could restart because you kind of need to know what you're doing right away. Um, otherwise, you end up wasting a lot of time and a lot, there's a lot of different things you can do. I always felt like I didn't have enough time to do everything I wanted to and had I the chance, I would want to go back and focus on specific things um, now that I know what I know. Um, it was a bit of a whack in the face to learn um, straight off the bat. There was a lot of bits and bobs to remember. Um, but once you play the first game, I think you settle in fine. It, it makes sense after that, but the first play was just a bit rough. Um, otherwise, it's a very interesting game and I quite like it. Um, <laughs> I think I say this about I say this about everything at this point. Um, yeah, I definitely want to play more, but it's very, very promising. It looks very, very good so far. And then the second thing was the expansion for the Quacks of Quidlinburg. We are huge fans of that game here in this house. It's one of the few that when it showed up, we immediately played it repeatedly. Um, and it's very, the, the Quacks itself um, is a very chill and very fun game. And I never thought I'd say this, but it's a push your luck game and I normally hate those. Um, but this one works. It's just, it, it's so elegant. It's stupidly well done. So of course the expansion, everyone wants to know Ooh, what's, what's the expansion about. And I did an unboxing video or I made an attempt at one anyway. Um, so you can check that out if you you want to but mostly what seems to be in the expansion now that we've played with it is you get a series of witches who have special powers and you can use them once per game there are more of the original books um you know that tell you what the tokens do so they have a variety um and there are more tokens and changes to some of the tokens so for instance you can get like a six cost orange pumpkin now um and not just a three cost one and the black chip also changes as well, the black token. Um, so it's definitely more of the usual good stuff. I'm not sure I'm entirely sold on the witches. Their abilities seem incredibly powerful, but I've only played with three, you know. All of them seem really, really, really good. Um, and the fact that you can choose, you can use them at particular times during the game, but only once, I suppose adds another layer of thought there. Um, but mostly it's just more good stuff. You also seem to get a lot of bang for a book for your money. Um, it adds a new player as well. Well. and for something like 15 pounds or whatever you know you get tons and tons of things um so it was definitely well worth it um and one i think it will, will be playing a lot of okay so next up ah yes so this is one i've had my eye on for a while and it was on sale um so this is broom service um which is co-designed by alexander fister who you may know from Great Western Trail. Um, and I've been very curious to try some of his other games, in particular Broom Service. Um, at the moment, I've really been enjoying a lot of the Spiel des Jahres games. Um, I have acquired some of the older ones. And I liked that this was one of the Kenner Spiel des Jahres. Um, and I wanted to see what was so special about, you know, Broom Service. Man, it's so much fun. It's very, very, very clever. Um, you know, and it's not complicated. I like you almost feel like this could be, you know, a game that you would play with children. Um, so the aim of the game is you're witches and you're delivering potions. Ta-da! Um, and you have a hand of cards, um, kind of like Concordia, that you can use um, once per round you use four of them and then they come back into your hand so you, you repeat them. Um, the problem is that on each card there's two halves so you can do an action bravely or you can do it, what's not, what's the opposite of brave? Cowardly, that's the word I wanted, cowardly. And if you do a brave action and your opponent has it in their hand, they instead take control of the action and get to do it instead of you. So there's a lot of guessing going on about what your opponent's going to put down. Um, at two players, I'm not sure if this is true for all cases, there's also a row of three cards revealed. And if you play one of those cards um, that's been revealed, you lose three victory points. So there's a lot of very kind of clever um, mechanisms going on here and ways to move around the board and maximizing your points. It's, it's super clever, it's super bright and cheerful and it plays very, very quickly. Um, so I was really impressed with Broom Service. I definitely want to play more of that. I think it'll be staying um, in the collection for sure. Um, so yeah, Alexander Fister, um, look at him go. <laughs> I, I, I really, really enjoyed Broom Service. Okay, this is where, it gets, as if it wasn't crazy enough, all the games we've been getting. Um, there was a sale. <laughs> Yes, yes, I know, I know. And roughly like a couple of months ago, maybe last, sometime at the end of last year, this same shop also had a sale and they have a board game cafe and they want to get rid of their second hand stock. And they just say, every game in this pile is 15 euros is what they did. 
Um, and we had a look um, and they had a photo up on the website and on their Facebook page and we were like, will we bother going? It's a long trip, it'd be like a five hour round drive for us to go. So even just the cost of petrol, you'd have to want to go. Until we spotted that they had rum and bones sack and tide in the pile. Now, if any of you know me or follow me on Twitter, you'll know that I have a copy or I had a copy of Rum and Bones that I wanted an upgrade kit for that Simon Games promised so that it would look like Rum and Bones second tight and I wouldn't have to buy a brand new expensive game. And I tweeted to them for, I don't know, 20 days straight to try and get an answer and <laughs> they never got an answer. So when we saw that they had second tide, we were like, maybe this is, maybe this is the solution that I won't have to tweet Simon Games anymore. Um, so my husband made the arduous trek. Um, I didn't go with him, but I wasn't feeling particularly well. It was just too much. So we sent him, I sent him off with specific instructions and here, he, this is what he returned with. Now I'd like to point out that he got there an hour before the shop opened and there were already two people in the queue. That tells you how busy this gets, okay? <laughs> so the first thing we got, <laughs> I don't know why he bought this, but he did, uh, which is Axes and Allies and Zombies. To be fair, I guess we don't own a copy of Axes and Allies. Um, I have to say the cover of the box looks really cool with the zombies. Um, I don't know when this is ever gonna get played. I don't know what I'm possessed of, but obviously the child in him was like, oh, I, I want to try this. So maybe at some point it means I'll play a game of Axis and Allies. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, Axis and Allies and Zombies, that's just mad. Now, real games, of course. Um, so, Rum and Bone Second Tide. Yeah, that was the first thing we went for. Wanted to make sure we got that. So, super excited to get to play that. I haven't played any of these just yet because um, I, I always want to get through the new new stuff before I get to the second hand stuff. Um, next on this is First Martians. Um, so, <laughs> speaking of Robinson Crusoe, so First Martians is. Um, a big game from Portal Games and it's supposed to be like Robinson Crusoe but in space like a survival game. Um, people had said that the rule book was shocking um, but more people then seem to say that the game itself is actually really good. Um, so when I saw that it was in the pile for 15 euros I said I'll have a look at that. Um, so I'm, I've done an unboxing which I should post at some point. I have a lot of I have a lot of unboxings guys to post. I have no idea how to get them out to you in a reasonable manner but I've got them. <laughs> um, so after that came flip ships yay um so the last time the shop had this sale flip ships was on our list of things to get but it was never put out on the table so obviously it got put out this time so we're like oh we have to try flip ships there's a lot of game in that box um, it's a beautiful cover it's a dexterity game um i'm curious to see how it plays um we've got a couple of dexterity games at this point but i'd, I'd like to try them more i think they make for great party games too but it's it's a stunning looking game and i'm dying to see what it's really all about and then finally, the last thing we picked up is Adventureland. Um, and so when I asked people, you know, which game should we play first, everybody instantly said Adventureland. I was like, what? Um, the main reason we picked it up is because it's by Wolfgang Kramer and Mr. Kiesling, who are some of our favorite designers, I won't lie. Um, they're, we're, they're definitely on our hot list, list at the moment. And everyone said, try Adventureland. So I was like, why? Okay, fine. So we opened up Adventureland. It's from Haber Games. Meaning it definitely, like, I was like, is this a game for children? Like, not that I mind or anything, but it just, I wanted to know. And then you open up the box and there's these really chunky meeples and you're like, oh, am I in the wrong age group? Oh. <laughs> Let me tell you, it's an incredibly clever game. It's so smart. Basically, the, the board is a, is a grid. Um, so it's A to G or whatever it is across the top and one to whatever number down the side, right? Kind of like a, ch you know, like a chess board. And the trick with this game is there are monsters to fight and you can pick up swords and they all appear in different grids in the map. But the only way to move around the map is you can move only east and south. You can't go back or you can't go north. You've got an array of people to move, which helps a little bit, but it makes for a very interesting puzzle. Um, and one I really wasn't anticipating when we set it up. Um, and it was one that messed with my mind quite a bit. Um, it was a very fun game. It didn't take too long to play. I really liked the art on the monsters. And while everything feels very generic fantasy, um, it's really very good. Um, and it's definitely one you could play with your kids, definitely your older kids for sure. Um, so um, I kind of, I wish I hadn't looked down on it so much because it really is a superlative game. It's just not a particularly attractive package, I think. That's the main problem I had with Adventureland. Okay, so 
that's the, all the new games we acquired. Yeah, that's a lot. I'm going to talk about that in a little bit. But, well, I suppose I could talk about it now, right? Um, I do feel like we are at the max um, of our board game collection. I think we're at the point where we probably have too many games. Um, and I did do a very big clear out this month as well. Um, we had a whole bunch of games that we just weren't playing. And I donated to um, our one of our local kind of gaming groups. And because I felt like somebody else should get use out of these games if we're not going to um the outpouring from people on twitter telling me what a great person i was was kind of shocking because i it hadn't occurred to me to what else would i've done with them you know it makes sense i want more people to play games i want more people to know about games i want those people that got those games to go home and tell their friends about the amazing game they played last night um, and to bring along to bring them along next time um so i had a lot of fun being able to give away some games and also created a lot of space for me um and i still feel like i have too many games and um, most of the stuff we got rid of were just you know things we'd never played like we'd a bunch of tickets to rides um we'd all sorts of bits and bobs and it's nice to know that you know that they're getting used somewhere else um i want to do other people to be clear out to their collection like that what do you do with the games that you know you know you're not going to be able to sell or you know trade away or anything like that where where do they go for you um and is there anywhere you know that they could be given that would be really helpful to people or get more people to play games um that's kind of my mission okay so those were the last of the things that we bought Pfft, jesus um and i've acquired some review copies so you'll be seeing some of these in the near future so actually this month and I've already reviewed at least two of them, I'm ahead of myself at the moment, I got a, um, a duet of Robotech games. So one was Ace Pilot, so that was really really fun, you can check out my review for that. And also Robotech Attack on the SDF one, um, which is the one with the cool giant robot. And you can also check out my review for that too. Um, they were really fun games to play. Um, I, had a, I had a really really good time with the Robotech games and I learned a lot about Robotech. Um, also arriving um, this month has been Tiny Ninjas. Um, Tiny Ninjas is a dice chucking um, push your luck game that you play in the box. It's beautiful. It's super, super pretty. Um, and I can't wait to tell you more about it. I actually, I really enjoyed it. I hadn't, I hadn't anticipated liking it as much as I did. It's just, it's just so much fun and it's so cute. Um, next comes Good Dog, Bad Zombie. What a title, right? And I'm a dog lover, so I couldn't help it. Um, this game sets you up. Um, it's been a zong zombie, zombie? Ap <laughs> There's been a zombie apocalypse and you were a dog and you've decided that, you know, Life isn't the same without your humans around, so you head off to rescue them. Yes, that is the premise for the game. You play as a dog. <laughs> um, it's amazing. It's so much fun. It sounds like a fun idea and a fairly basic game, but it really isn't. Um, it's really quite clever how it's put together. Um, I've been really impressed with that. And I have an expansion to go with it, which I'm looking forward to trying out as well. Um, next up is Obsession. Have you heard of Obsession? It's like Jane Austen, the board game. That's what people are calling it, um, but it's not really that. Um, you're head of a Victorian household and you're trying to improve your status and you know, you're marrying prospects and whatnot. Um, and when I saw Obsession uh, many moons ago, to, to be terrible, I got obsessed with it. Um, I instantly looked at the backer kit, I remember, and it was so expensive and I couldn't hack it. And it came up again, actually, on again, the list of, you know, games that play well solo. Um, and it just, oh, I couldn't, I couldn't, I couldn't help myself. So I'm very thankful that when I got in touch with the, the games designer, um, Dan Halloran, um, who also has Irish collections, by the way, very kindly sent me a review copy, um, which really recently arrived and I was so excited. I also got an expansion as well, a Wessex expansion. Um, so I've had one game of this so far. Um, it's a tableau builder um, and it's a really kind of interesting one because it involves hand management as well as getting things into place. Um, and I had a lot of fun with it. I think it's very, it's very beautiful. It's very well put together. Um, and everything is really rich and kind of looks. And I really can't wait to get to play more of it now that I kind of got to grips with it. So that was Obsession. And on the final um, review, which will be coming next week, is a solo game. And it's Robin Hood, Hero of the People. 
Now, as you may notice, people, I don't normally do solo games, but somebody asked me to. And I thought that the game looked light enough that, you know, a beginner like myself might be able to appreciate it and kind of to share it with you guys who might also be interested in trying out something solo for yourselves. Um, so that review should be ready hopefully next week. Um, it's a fun little game. To me, it felt like a puzzle. Um, and that's okay. The artwork is fantastic, and um, I didn't mind it. I, I think it's. A, I think other people will appreciate it more than I did, because um, it definitely is reminds me of other solo games I've seen. Um, I just think it wasn't exactly for me, but it's still um, a very solid game. I think it's a good place for a beginner to start. Okay, so that was a ridiculous amount of um, new games that arrived. Um, the next step, I suppose, is to ask you, you know, what new games did you acquire this month? Um, I promised, I, I don't know if I say this every month, but it feels like I do, um, is that I'm really at a point now where I don't need any more games. There's nothing left, really. There's like absolutely nothing left. Um, so this should really be the end of this. <laughs> um, and also I'd like to save some money to possibly go to Essen this year. So I think we have more than enough games for quite some time. I think just sometimes you get, I kind of had a wish list or a list of things in my head and um, the only way to play games around here really is to, to buy them most of the time. We don't have a group of friends who buy, who buy games and kind of share with us. Um, um, but you know, this is just, I suppose, how we um, get new games, but we do trade them on and things like that. So I'm, I'm gonna try not to feel too guilty about it, but um, it should be um, diminishing soon enough. Okay, and finally, the last kind of games that arrived um, is trades, and we all know I love a good trade. Um, it's not been a great month for trading. I think we traded away most of what we, good, kind of the good stuff we had, but also there's just nothing that we really wanted. Um, so in that case, the two trades we did manage, however, was we traded away Quantum for a copy of Kemet. I know, strange thoughts, right? Um, Quantum really just did nothing for us. Um, it's a dice game, you you know, you roll them, you put them in spaceships. And I'd heard some, well, I'd heard some about it and I really liked the sound of it, but it was very, very kind of basic, I suppose, for us. We didn't, I don't know, I just didn't hit our, it just didn't, you know, ring the bell, as they say. Um, and so we got Kemet. I don't know why we got Kemet, but we did. Um, I like the theme of Kemet, it's Egyptian gods. Um, it's an area control game. It looks very similar to something like Innis. Um, I don't know how the hell we're gonna play it. Two players, <laughs> we'll see. But I've heard Kemet does something very unique and special that is Kemet's own thing. And I'm very curious to see what that might be. And the second thing I traded away was Grand Austria Hotel. Um, mostly because we've all these other Simone Luciani games floating around right now. And Grand Austria Hotel, well, very, very good. Um, was just a little fiddly for the pair of us. We just found ourselves pulling out other dice games instead. And we got a copy of Turn and Taxis. Um, so Turn and Taxis is a Spiel des Jahres winners. Um, it's a very, very old one. And it's about the German Postal Service. <laughs> um, I really, really like it. It's like, it's, it's, not, it's not quite Ticket to Ride for the Postal Service, but it kind of is. Um, it's got some very clever mechanisms about route building and connecting places on the map. It plays very quickly um, and I really liked it. I'm looking forward to playing more of that. I've only had one game of that under my belt so far. Um, so yeah, that was all the trades for this month. Um, so what have you been doing with your spare games? Do you trade? Um, I'd love to hear if you got any cool trades or anything you're interested in trading. Um, please do let me know in the comments below. Okay, so we've got our way through trades. We're finally down onto games I've been playing. Hey, doesn't it sound like a lot? Because it's been a lot. Um, I recently like took four days off board game inquisition. I just took a break. I think there's only so long you can play games for without kind of exhaustion settling in. Um, and it's been the weirdest four days because I haven't taken any photos of the games I've been playing or, you know, tweeting about them or things like that. Um, and it's odd to just stop really stop. Now I did play a lot of games though and I got a lot of games played. I cleared off our entire new game shelf. Okay so finally we stopped talking about all that capitalist nonsense um, where we buy games. It's, who else does one acquire games um, other than trading or buying? Um, I suppose you could gift people games. Um, so I'm going to talk next about the games I've actually been playing. Now I've been playing a lot of one-off games especially if you listen to my you know the new games acquisition list. I've played all of those at least once. Um, and also that goes for pretty much all of the reviews and everything else. So while my app doesn't keep track of, you know, all of the, it, 
it doesn't count all the frequency of games I've played it's just the ones I've played the most of so it all I always think that it comes out a little bit askew um, so the first thing we're playing tons of is Gloomhaven so we have five plays of that um, soon to be more because it's Gloomhaven day here in my house woohoo um, yeah Gloomhaven continues um, to amaze and astound me as I motor my way through a variety of characters <laughs> I think I've played four or five different characters at this point I think I just I've been really lucky in getting easy quests in changing them um, but Gloomhaven never felt to disappoint it's one of those games I just find so relaxing it's a shame about the setup but it can't be helped but on Sunday night in our house we sit down and we play Gloomhaven and so and I like to I like to post about it on social media you know tonight's Gloomhaven night you know and I don't mean it in a sense of you all should be playing Gloomhaven I mean it in the sense of is there a game that you take time out of your day or out of your week to sit down and purposefully play and I think more people should do things like that, like make an event out of it. So this is Gloomhaven Day. You know, what's your day? Do you have a side day? I don't know, an Orleans day or, you know, that kind of thing. Um, I want more people to make, you know, their gaming time kind of special. Um, so yeah, that's why I keep shouting about Gloomhaven Day. Okay, second on the list is Kingsburg, unsurprisingly. Kingsburg is just, oh, it's such a treat. Um, I hate it, but I, but I love it. And, oh, I just, oh. It's no good way to describe Kingsburg. <laughs> yes, it's great. Sure it is. Am I frustrated when I play it? Hell yes. Um, is it rewarding? I guess so. <laughs> but I enjoy the process. Um, so I, I don't, I, yeah, I have no, I have no real words for how to talk about Kingsburg other than it is, I don't know. <laughs> it's great. It's challenging. Yeah, I'd lose my brain in a muddle. Um, but it's very yeah, no, it it's it's a great game. There's no there's no two ways about it. A game that messes with your mind like that, I think, um, you know, has done something unique, right? Something special. Okay, next on the list is the Quacks of Quidlinburg. Yeah, I mentioned that earlier too. We're getting we're playing a lot of that. And that's even before the expansion arrived. It's just so much fun, it's so easy, it doesn't take long to play. It's non-competitive. It reminds me of Wingspan like that, where it's just, you get to do your thing, you get to do your thing, and we'll play along together. And there's a little bit of interaction um, on the player, um, like the, who the value track. You know, you're, I'll come up with the word in a minute. You know those numbers that go around the track on the board, Nettie? What would you call those? You guys know, right? <laughs> right in with the answer. <laughs> victory track so your numbers on the victory track is mainly the main way to interact with each other with the number of rats between you to give the other player a bonus if you're behind which I really really like um but overall Quax is an outstanding game um totally obsessed with it and the expansion just adds more good Quax goodness so you know you just can't go wrong um I mentioned Wingspan yeah there's been a lot of Wingspan and that's mostly because we've been introducing it to people as they've come to visit Wingspan is a fabulous game um, and there's no two ways about it and every time I play it I feel the, feel the same way it hasn't lessened at all over time um, and on a special side note my video for the five things you need to know about Wingspan is still on the Board Game Geek page as the hot, as the hot video um, for many a week or two now and I'm really really proud of myself that it's there because I've never had that happen to me before. I've had by far my most popular video. Um, so I'm really, really proud of myself for that one. I don't know why the Wingspan one, um, you know, over any of the others. I don't know what I did that was special in that, but um, that's just, that's nice, isn't it? Um, the other game we play a lot of is Orleans. Um, and that's mostly because I'll be doing a review for the expansion for um, intrigue, Trade and Intrigue um, very, very soon. So I wanted to play it, um, or I wanted to play Orleans and I reviewed it, uh, but I also want to play Orleans with all par the parts of the expansion each one at a time so I could judge them, um, you know, um, individually and then judge them together. So that took a lot of playing of Orleans, of course. Um, although I have discovered a perfect opening sequence, which I'm really proud of, because Orleans is the game where I always feel like I am behind and I can't do everything I want to all of the time. And it drives me a little bit mad. Um, but I, you know, I really, really like that. Um, if I was to, you know, to say one game has been a real standout recently, 
um, out of all the things we've been playing and there's been a lot of things. I think broom service made a really big impression on me because it's not what I was anticipating. It's bright and colourful, short and sweet and clever. And that's kind of what I, I look for in a game these days. Um, so it, yeah, it's been, a, it's been a real standout game. So that's what I've been playing. What's been getting to your table? Or what do you wish is, was getting to your table? I always like, I have so many games I need to get to. Um, and I say this a lot. Um, at least I've played them once, so I have a good feel for them. But I want to play them again and again. And I think I'm getting to that stage in my collecting where I have plenty now. I just want to play with what I have. Um, and in one sense, that's a really satisfying feeling actually to go, it's all here. There's nothing I'm looking for. <laughs> Um, it's also kind of terrifying too because board games have been the thing I use to pet me up. Um, you know, when things weren't feeling great, you know, you hoped, you know, there'd be another, it'd be a board game coming in the post or a trade or something like that. You know, other people, I don't know, go shopping or buy alcohol or whatever it is that you do that, you know, when you've had a really crap day and you just want something small to cheer you up, this has been my cheer me up. So it's going to be strange not having that. However, I can't wait to delve into what's here because what's here is so, so good. And I've curated it very carefully. Um, and I know that I've done some great picking when it comes to games and um, that I know we will enjoy. So I, 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 really, I really look forward to that. So I hope you guys do the same. Or if not, maybe you might think about it. Like, you know, how many games in your collection are you really happy to play right now? Um, is that all of them? Some of them? maybe none of them. Um, are there games that you should, you know, be getting rid of or getting away? I think, you know, maybe it's just because spring slash summer is in the air. I'm doing a bit of a clear out. That might be part of it too. But um, you should be happy with what you have and there should be plenty there for you to play with. Okay, so finally, just a little roundup of the, the channel itself and how things have been going. Um, first, I'd like to thank my Patreon supporters. I have some. Um, you guys are awesome. Um, <laughs> And I don't care what your pledge is. Um, what I do care is that you bother to take the time out of your life to come and try and support me. And it really means a lot. Um, so it's, that's just awesome. And plus it gives me more, pe more people I can talk to about, you know, I suppose what's been happening with the channel. Um, the first big piece of news you may have noticed is that I now do a podcast. I know, right? I don't know why I spread myself so thin, but it's been really fun because I'd much rather I had someone to make videos with me as well, if it was possible. Um, I think having one person's, one person's opinion on a game isn't enough because they're only one person, you know, you kind of need someone else as well to kind of bounce ideas off. So that's where the Tabletop Inquisition podcast came together. And myself and my friend from the Tabletop Games blog have joined forces to create a podcast. So it's called Tabletop Inquisition. We've had one episode out already, so that's available on my website if you want to go listen to it there. I do believe it's available on a bunch of podcasting services, but I know absolutely nothing about this. So I, I think it's out there somewhere. I'm lucky that uh, my better half has been working on this behind the scenes. He's doing all the tech stuff, so fair juice. And the next episode is going live I do believe today um, at 12 midday GMT time, you know, for everybody. And I recommend you check it out. Um, this week's episode, we're talking about some game terms. Um, we're also talking about who we play games with. And of course, you know, a little bit about what we've been playing. Um, I think we're getting better and better the more we do it. It's only the second episode. I know I get really nervous. <laughs> I get really nervous when I film. So let alone, I got really nervous, you know, just talking to the pod, just, just talking on my own. Um, but I think it's kind of, it's been really fun to do. And I think it's so much cooler to have someone else there. And for those of you who enjoy podcasts, I'd love for you to have a listen and give us some feedback. You know, we're, we are but babies at this. So I would love to hear more. Um, the other thing to know about this channel is, I've talked about too many games, I've talked about The Purge, <laughs> um, is the fact that there was a lot of Robotech games this month. Um, and I also talked about those as well because they were, they were pretty fun to do. But overall it's been a really, really busy month and I have a lot of unboxing videos. These are new, right? So I, I didn't have those a month ago, correct? So on Monday now I have an unboxing video. On Tuesday, I do a written mini review. That's mostly visible on Instagram and Facebook if you use those. Um, but I do a tiny one for Twitter as well. Um, on Wednesday, I publish the bigger reviews, the five things you need to know about, blah. Um, on Thursday, what do we do on Thursday? 
that's normally kind of a Patreon day and we'll post pictures of what I've been playing. And on Friday, I've been trying to do Facebook Live videos where I'll pick a topic and I'll sit and I'll have a chat about it. And hopefully other people will chime in with some comments or questions or things like that. Um, and they're all available on my Facebook page if you want to go check those out where I talked about things like, you know, being wrong when playing games. Um, what makes a classic game? I can't even remember what my third one was because they just come into my head and I sit and have a chat about them. Um, but I like being able to interact with people and some people seem to be enjoying those so um, yeah I'm busy I'm trying to make as much good content as possible I hope you're enjoying it um, and yeah and so far so good and next month looks like it's going to be well you know even better I got a lot I got a lot of work on my plate um, but thank you as always um, for joining in with me if you have any comments or questions or queries or things you'd like to ask or know please do leave a point in the comments or if you'd like to do something you know really nice you can like or subscribe or tell people about the channel that's always good the more people that know the better or if you want to be super amazing actually no you wouldn't even be super amazing if you want to somehow support me um, I do have a Patreon um, you can look that up or check that out but I'm not going to push that down anybody's throat I don't think you should have to pay for what I do but if you felt like it you you know every little bit helps so until next time i look forward to reading your comments and this has been march's monthly roundup and on to a new month and um, this isn't an april's fools <laughs> and until next time everybody take care bye bye bye